traveling with an infant. That sentence alone might give you some anxiety. And if so, you are not the only one. But do not worry, my friend. I'm sharing tons of tips and tricks today that will help make this travel go a bit easier. We'll talk about things like how to get through security as easy as possible, what you need to know about bringing along formula or breast milk, what you need to know about checking your stroller or your car seat, how do you do that. Um, we're also going to talk about what you need to have in your diaper bag. We've got lots of things to cover today. So let's get started. you are adopting a newborn and will be traveling with your brand new baby, or if you're just planning to bring your infant to grandma's or on a trip, the idea of traveling with a baby can feel really overwhelming. If you're new here and we haven't met, my name is Valerie Trumbauer. I am a postpartum doula and a certified lactation counselor, and I'm the creator of New Parents Academy, which is a community for um, expecting and adopting families to just share information and navigate life with a newborn. So let's get started here by... Um, Oh, you know what I wanted to tell you? Okay, first of all, I have notes because there is so much information <laughs> that I want to cover. So this is not going to be like a nicely, you know, Emmy nominated film here. You're going to see me flipping through my notes. When I decided to create this video, I did so because one of my course members had asked for any tips as she's preparing to travel. So what I did was I put a post on Instagram and I'll put it here um, that asked what's working for everyone? What worked when you traveled with your infant? So I have compiled a lot of those tips and tricks as well as recommendations that I have. But if you want to read through all those comments and there's a lot of them, you can go to that post on my Instagram. Instagram at New Parents Academy. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, follow me on YouTube. Can you hit click follow? It helps or subscribe or whatever it is. It helps YouTube know that the content I'm making like makes sense to someone. So thank you. Okay. So the first thing that we are going to talk about before we talk about where you're sitting on the plane, all that stuff, we need to get your baggage checked and get you through security. So let's start with baggage check. When we're talking about checking, what we're talking about here is your stroller and your car seat. And how do you, how are you getting that to your final destination? As far as that's concerned, there are two types of checks, well, like ways to check that your stroller and your car seat. Um, the first is baggage check. That is outside of the airport when you see that, when you pull up outside of the airport, or when you are at the counter of your airline and you hand over your bags. That's considered baggage check. Gate check is when you are taking things all the way through security. And you, you might remember um, if you've, you know, you've gone through, you're going to board the plane, you show your boarding pass, you walk onto the tarmac right before you step onto the plane. There's usually like a pile of things off to the right, strollers, car seats, all those things. That is gate checking. So baggage check, you get rid of things early, gate check, you're taking it all the way with you. So when we think about what do we want to do with our car seat and our stroller and what's the pros and cons to each of these options, um, I think it's really important to kind of look at each choice and then you can do what's best for you. So let's start with baggage check. So the, uh, the good side of checking your stroller and your car seat at the baggage check is that early on you are free of it. You've gotten rid of your stroller and your car seat, or you might just want to do it with your car seat. You want to, you want to keep your stroller. You've, you know, you've gotten rid of it. If you do it with both your car seat and your stroller, you can wear your baby. And now you are navigating through the airport, just like as if you didn't, you know, you don't have a baby, you don't have a stroller, you don't have all that stuff. Just have your little tiny human strapped to the front of you. So that's the good side of baggage check. The bad side of baggage check is that you now are depending, you're completely dependent on that stroller and car seat making it to the final destination. Of course, that's generally what happens, but sometimes luggage gets lost or it didn't make it on the flight and it's on the next flight. If that happens to your car seat, that's a drag. Like now you're at your final destination, ready to go explore, do whatever you're doing, and you don't have a way to get your baby out of the airport, okay? The other downside of baggage check is that it things can get damaged. Your, your um, stroller is likely fairly expensive. You know, it's kind of getting thrown around. If you've ever looked at the, looked out the window as you're sitting there waiting to take off, you see them like tossing things onto the plane that's your stroller. So there's also a lot of hands touching it. Even if you put it into a bag, the risk of something happening to it is um, higher if it's baggage check versus gate check. Okay, so what is the good and bad sides of gate checking? So the good side of gate checking your um, 
or I guess we can start with the bad side. The bad side is you have to haul it through the airport. If that's not what you wanted to do, you know, you're now like, okay, we're going to stop and get something to eat. We're going to go to the bathroom. And here you are hauling your car seat throughout the airport. But the good side is that we'll talk more later about buy, should you buy your baby a seat or not. If you didn't buy your baby a seat and you get to the gate and it's like, oh my gosh, I'm sitting next to, you know, you can go up and ask, are you sitting next to an empty seat? If you find out you're sitting next to an empty seat, you can bring your car seat on board. If you have checked your car seat at baggage check, that's no longer an option for you, right? So that is one downside of, um, of gate checking your car seat. Um, the good part about gate checking your car seat is that you know that it's going to get there and it's getting there with minimal handling. So that, you know, you're, you are pushing your stroller through the second before you get on the plane, you're folding it up, whatever, putting it into the bag, which if you have a bag, I recommend you do. And we'll talk more about that. Um, then you're, it's right there. Now it's just being put on the plane and taken off the plane at the end. Downside again is when you get off the plane, you might have to stand there for a minute or two while you're waiting for them to get the gate checked items off. Okay, so I think that covers everything we were talking about, about what the heck you're doing with your stroller. Let me check. So, you know what else I wanted to tell you was if, so I do recommend that you have a bag for your car seat or your stroller. That helps less hands to touch it. If something falls off, then it's in the bag, like a piece of your stroller or whatever. If you don't want to spring for the car seat and stroller bags, which can be expensive, there's also universal ones that aren't quite as expensive and I'll link some options below. Um, Another option, if you don't want to spring for that um, bag, if you're like, we don't travel all that often, is to use black contractor trash bags. You can just put the car seat in there, tie it in a knot. I would put like the tag on it that, with your name just in case something were to happen to it. And then when you get to the destination, you can just throw it out um, or and then make sure you bring one for the way home. I know that that is not as eco-friendly, so <laughs> I'm just giving you all the options, okay? That's my job. I'm giving you all the options. Let's see what's next. Oh, there is actually a stroller that folds up and fits in the overhead compartment. So I'm going to link that below. It is a pricier option, but if you're someone who travels a lot, that might be something that you want to, um, you want to buy. So I'll link that below. It's, it's, it's pretty neat technology. Okay. So you have made your decision about how, how you're, where you're checking things. And now we need to get you through security. If you are able to get a TSA pre-check, that is definitely going to make your life easier. But then again, there's a cost associated with that. One thing to note here is that any children 12 and under can go through the pre-check with you. They do not, like your baby doesn't need their own TSA pre-check. So it might be worth it for you. It makes things a little bit easier. Okay, so big question. Can you bring breast milk and formula through security? Is there a limit to the quantities? According to the TSA website, it's a reasonable quantity, but this isn't something you need to work to worry about if you're just traveling with like the formula or breast milk that your baby needs. You do not need to worry about them being in smaller than three ounces. They don't need to be in a quart size bag. So pretty pretty much the um, <laughs> the requirements for liquids and all of those guidelines don't that's not the requirements for breast milk and formula okay and something uh, something else worth noting is that if you're um if you're traveling without your baby but you're traveling with breast milk you were on a trip you were pumping you can still travel with that breast milk through security even if your baby isn't there Okay, also wanted to note that if you have like ice packs in with your formula or breast milk, those are also um, able to go through security. So I'm going to link the TSA website below where they talk about these things so that you, you have like a full picture of what's going on. Okay, as we're talking about getting through security and those requirements, uh, understand that your diaper bag does not count as a checked bag and your breast pump does not count as a checked bag. So if you need to bring your breast pump with you, that's fine. I mean, it's another thing to lug, but it's not, it does not count as a checked bag. Okay. So we've gotten your liquids through uh, security. What about your baby? So if your baby is in a stroller, the baby is going to be need, need to be taken out of the stroller to get through security. 
If you are wearing your baby, you do not need to take your baby off of you unless you're asked to do so by the TSA. But the, the requirement is not that you take your baby out of the carrier. So that might be a great option. Like even if you're bringing your stroller through security, before you get through there, when you're standing in the security line, get your baby all set up in your carrier so that you are able to just walk through security. Babies do not need to take off of the, off their shoes, so that's nothing to worry about either. Yay, you got through security. Now let's talk about seats, okay? Should you get your baby their own seat? This is a big question that a lot of people ask. Back to the pros and cons. Okay, let's start with the pros. When it comes to should you buy your baby a seat, from a safety standpoint, it is definitely recommended that you buy your baby a seat. This allows your baby to have their own space. They are safely secured, especially during takeoff and landing. They are, you know, if you're, you want your baby to nap, your baby's mo probably more likely to nap, maybe in the car seat than on you, but your baby has his own space and from a safety standpoint, that is the recommendation. Now, of course, the bad side of that is that you have to pay for another seat. It's not like you get a discount on a seat just because you're, you know, the person occupying the seat weighs 10 pounds, okay? It's still a full price seat. So for some people, that is not um, what they want to do. If you are bringing your baby as a lap child, it's important to understand you're going to you're going to note that when you're buying your ticket, but likely you are going to need to sit on the right side of the plane. So if you're sitting in the plane, the right side. And the reason there on most uh, airplanes, but you want to check with your airline about the plane that you'll be on. This right side of the cabin has one extra oxygen than the left side. OK, so if you and your baby and your partner are traveling and you have two seats, you want to be on the right side so that you have that extra oxygen. But again, check with your airline about the airplane that you're flying on. Also worth uh, noting is that if you don't buy your baby a seat, when you get to the gate, check with the attendant, because if there is an extra seat on the plane, an empty seat, you, you may be able to ask if you can be seated next to that seat. So that way you have that space. And now if you've brought your car seat along, you can also bring your car seat on and put it in that extra space or in that extra seat. So that might be an option if it's available. And what should you choose, an aisle or a window? Well, when it comes to the poll on Instagram, the consensus was to sit in the aisle. And I agree with that. Um, people like the ability to get up and down as needed, to get things from the overhead compartment, to get up if the baby's fussing. You have a little bit more freedom on that aisle seat than you do in the window. So aisle's my recommendation. But before you get on the plane and get into your seat, it's important that I believe before you get on, you want to change your baby's diaper. Head to the bathroom, get everybody all situated so that when you get on the plane, that's not the first thing you need to do. One tip that somebody shared on Instagram that I thought was a great one was to, it, within your diaper bag, to have a gallon Ziploc bag in there, have like two diapers, maybe an extra onesie, wipes, diaper cream, and oh, a, a changing pad or a disposable changing pad. That way you can just grab that, run into the um, bathroom to do the diaper change without having to be in there like rooting through your diaper bag for what you need. Another option is to have like, um, the, I'll link it below, but just like a compact um, changing pad wipes diaper combo. I'll link that below. It is, um, the one I'll put down there is the Skip Hop Pronto, but there's different options out there, but I'll put a couple below or I'll put one or two below. So when do you board? Some people recommended that you board last because that way you're not sitting there for 20 minutes while everybody else boards the plane. I sort of disagree with this. I think that there's a benefit to getting on there early. You have your pick of overhead compartment space. You're not worrying that now you're trying to walk around and jam things in. And it also gives you a chance to get settled before takeoff. You're gonna need to get things out. And the first thing that I would do as you board is, um, get out your Clorox wipes, okay? If there's two of you, hand the baby off and um, and so that one of you can kind of be wiping things down. If not, wear your baby. I would wear your baby. Somebody should be wearing the baby when you um, get on the plane anyway because then you're hands free. Um, but you're going to get out your Clorox wipes and wipe everything down, okay? Who knows, like, who was there beforehand? So um, I'll link, like, if I can find, like, a compact... Clorox wipes. I'll put them down there. I'm trying to give you all the resources down below. But first thing you do, get on there, 
um, wipe everything down, get settled. So get what you need out of your overhead bag, put that up there. You're not going to be want to be up and down a lot and you don't want to depend on having to get things out of there. So have what you need in the seat underneath in front of you. And then if there's different things as far as entertainment or toys, you want to have those within reach. Okay, so feeding the baby. Let's think about when and how you're going to be feeding the baby. It is a good idea to, feed, to plan to feed the baby um, during takeoff and landing because that swallowing will help you help the baby to kind of clear the pressure in their ears the same way that chewing gum does for us. But if feeding wise, it just doesn't work for you, don't stress. Um, if your baby takes a pacifier, that is definitely another option during takeoff and landing. But now when we're thinking about those bottles, bottle preparation, um, of course, if you're breastfeeding, you probably have what you need. Um, but if, you, if you're using expressed breast milk, you want to have that in bottles. I would already have it measured out to how much you think you're going to need. So you have a few bottles each with what you need. Um, so you're not like mixing and doing all of that. If you are feeding your baby formula, this might be a time that you want to spring for that pre-made formula. So you would um, not have to do the mixing. So you could either have those bottles already made and have them in a cooler with a little ice pack so that you have out your pre-measured bottles of what your baby already takes. Um, or you would... Um, you would have like the big pre-made formula and then you could kind of um, pour those, but pouring is gonna be kind of messy. So they also have, especially if you're traveling with a newborn, they have like the small pre-made formulas, you can do that as well. If you don't wanna go down that road and that's just too expensive or whatever, you can fill, what I would do is fill your bottles with how much water you need. So you might have three or four bottles each with four ounces of water in them. Again, that doesn't count as they're not gonna take that away from you. It's in a baby bottle, you went through security, everything's fine. Um, and then you're gonna have a formula dispenser that you can just pour in. It's already pre-measured and I'll link it below. Um, so you can just, right before you feed the baby, you're mixing it up. Um, you could do that mixing um, ahead of time, depending on how timing works, but you don't wanna be doing like a whole lot of pouring when you need to feed the baby. Okay, so let's talk about your diaper bag. You definitely want to pack more uh, more diapers and more things than you think you will need. Somebody on Instagram said uh, they had like a great equation and they said one diaper for every two hours plus two extra diapers. And I think that's a good idea. Another idea that someone had was to use night diapers if it's a longer flight. Of course, a night diaper is not gonna solve your problem if the baby poops, you still need to change it. But a night diaper is gonna hold a lot more than a regular diaper would. So that's another option. You also want to be sure and pack extra outfits for your baby in case there's a poopy blowout and at least an extra shirt for yourself. How much would it stink if you're sitting there and baby blowout happens on your shirt? So have a shirt with you as well. You also want to have toys or activities to keep your baby um, amused. So even if you're traveling with like a three month old, you're like, mm, they don't really like, what are they doing? You're bringing like little rattles. You're bringing, somebody had said like a, tr a mirror is a good idea, a little book. Um, and don't get all of those things out at once. You're, you want to save these things. So here's the first rattle. Okay. When that gets boring, boop, that goes away. Now let's get out this teether. Okay. So you might be wondering about headphones. Is that recommended? So the reason that, um, people talk about using headphones, um, on an airplane is for two different reasons. The first, from a safety standpoint, there's part of the air, there's places on the airplane where you could be seated where it's really noisy, at it, which is an unsafe level for your baby. So that's one reason that headphones are uh, suggested. Another is so that you can play white noise or a video for your baby. There are Wi-Fi headphones that I will link below that you can put onto your baby and play that white noise if you're trying to get your baby to go to sleep or if you're watching, you know, a video or something, you can do that without disrupting passengers behind around you. There's no worry that you're going to pump up the volume so high that you're going to hurt your baby's ears. They actually max out at a certain decibel so that everything, so that you're keeping, you know, guarding your baby's hearing, which is so important. Oh, um, you know what else I will link below is an app that I recommend for, um, or I'll put it right here. Here's a picture of an app that I recommend for white noise, if you're looking for that.
And one last thing that a lot of people are really anxious about is what if my baby cries and disrupts everyone? Of course, you don't want that to happen. And I know that you're trying to avoid that. But let's say it's a worst case situation and your baby is screaming, right? You turn around, you look, you're like, oh my God, the guy three rows back. He's like giving me this face and I don't know how to make my baby stop crying. Remember this, that man with the crabby face, he was once a three month old that cried uncontrollably. Okay, so don't let the crabby man throw your whole game off. Like you are doing the very best you can. That's your internal mantra to yourself. <clears throat> and just remember that as you're traveling, no matter what happens, whether it's quiet and peaceful or everybody's losing their marbles, you are doing the very best you can. I hope that you found this to be super helpful. I'm gonna link all of the resources below. If you found this video helpful, please hit subscribe and um, be sure and follow along. I'm always creating um, information that helps people navigate that newborn time. I know it can be tricky and I'm glad to be able to help you. You can check out New Parents Academy below and check out this video. They're gonna show you another video. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, see you in the next video.